All right. Hello. Uh, there is no running microphone, so I'm just going to have to stick myself here. Uh, just bear with me during the talk. Um, I'm Farzad, but oh, okay, yeah, actually, there's one. Yeah, I'm Farzad, and um, yeah, this is good. Um, yeah, my name is Farzad, but actually, in Stately, they refer to me as the Steve Wozniak of Stately, just because I was employee number two, and I think me and Steve have a belly fat in common. Um, so that's good. Yeah, so if you like whatever I'm talking about here or just follow me because for the sake of David because we work in the same place uh, <laughs> That's my username on Twitter as why is it and I usually rant a lot about the state management and stuff um, So we can learn together uh, if you want. Yeah, so today I'm here to talk about of course the state charts But I'm not trying to sell you any ideas or using state charts or even you know using the state machines and stuff I just want to you know, we want to build something together. We want to do some live coding or live diagramming, which is exciting. I believe React is great, right? We are in a React conference, and it's the most reasonable thing to say. React is great. I feel like we made a huge leap forward when we came from jQuery to React. Uh, we had a wonderful discussion with Ryan, the creator of SolidJS last night at dinner, where he talked to me about the idea that Everybody thinks that we made like a jump from jQuery to React overnight, but it actually took us years. And I think that's correct. But I think what React did was that it was inspirational enough for most developers to go out there and scout the uncharted territories. And that's like, we have a very innovative culture and a welcoming culture for different integrations into React. That's why we have things such as, you know, React for mobile. React Native, which is cross-platform, which is great. We have React Inc, I guess, it's, if that's the correct name for the CLI rendering. You're using still like the uh, same components you're accustomed to using React on the web or mobile, and it still render something using React in the command line. And there is React for WebGL, or there is like React 3.js fiber renderer from the Pomondras team, which is amazing because it's like you are using two normal components as if you were using React on the web and you get like a 60 frame per second freaking awesome animation on the web. Um, and there is also another project that was impressing just because React is so empowering and that is like you use React components to create videos using FFmpeg, which is just amazing. And I think all of that is because we, React is so welcoming. The React community is so rich and welcoming. And one of the upsides of React community is that you have a lot of open source options out there, one of which could be just component libraries. We have Chakra UI, we have Blueprint, we have Material UI, Ant Design, whatever, whatever, and they're all great. But they're all kind of dealing with the same problems. We have a lot of complexity when dealing with component libraries. We have availability problems. Networks could be crappy. It might be surprising that only 15 or 20% of the people who can access networks these days on the web have 4G. The rest are either on 2G or 3G. So it really matters if you're developing things that are consistently working and are functional over different network availabilities. And people are dealing with like focused management just because the platform sucks at that. And it's really hard to you know, move the focus between different components, and it's just like one of the hardest problems that people are dealing with when developing component libraries. There is a cross-browser problem that we've been dealing with from the first day of IE3, 4, whatever. And there is cross-framework, because of course we could develop things that could work across different frameworks. And there is accessibility, which I, I'm not really knowledgeable about, but <laughs> you know, it's a concern, I get it. It's serious, so that's good. But the component library developers know that these are challenging and these are the day-to-day -day challenges they're trying to solve. That's why we have seen recent rise of the machine, people moving more towards using state machines and state charts for developing framework or platform agnostic components for component libraries. Two of which would be Zag.js from the creator of Chakra UI, which is a set of components that are agnostic to almost anything and they work across all the frameworks and the platforms and everything, and they're modeled using state charts. It's like a bunch of models uh, that work with any sort of integration. And there's Rich UI from the very creators of React Router, um, which is like a set of uh, accessible components, but the accessibility part is also heavily modeled using state machines. Actually, I want just wanted to quote this from the official documentation of Zach.js, and I'm just going to go on and read it to you. 
In Chakra UI React, we've experienced too many hiccups and bugs in the past related to how we coordinate events, manage the state, and side effects. Most of these bugs are associated with the orchestration within useEffect, useMemo, useCallback, etc. And that means that there's a real problem to solve using state machine, thankfully. The issues were replicated in our Chakra UI view pursuit as well, which means the problems are portable across different frameworks and created a maintenance hell for us. We're not going to read the rest of it. You get the idea, right? So it's like there is a motivation to move more towards the state machines, and they're actually solving a real problem these days. In fact, this is, um, well, all the components in the ZAG.js um, official website and documentation have a visualization just because the state machines give you a very nice way to visually see the behavior or the logic of your components. And also, there's a screenshot from the Reach UI. Just, uh, you know, this is one of the state machines for their tooltip component. We might think tooltip is just basically toggling the show, you know, between going between the showing and hiding the state, but actually, it's a lot more complicated. Um, quick poll here How many of you, by show of hands, have heard about the state machines before? We're not counting David. All right, great. Well, that's awesome. Then, what am I talking about here? <laughs> Uh, okay, so just for one person who didn't raise their hand, just for you, uh, final state machines are a set of final states. It's a bunch of states, final states, like unique names of a certain snapshot of your UI or your software that we want to refer to. Hey, this is locked. Hey, this is unlocked. And the way we move between these states is using events or the intention word, which is perfect that David used in his talk. And we transition different, different states, and based on that, we react to that in our UI. An important thing when trying to model with the state machines is that you need to think in states. And that takes a little bit of time. There's a learning curve. Because we're accustomed to think about the states on the left side. We think a state is a collection of language primitives. We think there is a Boolean, there is a union. I don't know, there's like an array, there's a list, there's an object, and we call that a state, right? That's how you use user state, you use, reduce, use reducer. But I think the better way to do that would be to think about the state as just a combination or as a union of different names or strings. We know that our component could be in the idle state. We, we know that it could be in the loading state instead of saying, I mean, how would you even talk about the state if, if we were on the left side? Um, okay, so my component is in the state of is loading true, accounts empty, and error null. That doesn't make sense. That's not humane. Let's do some live diagramming together to let these concepts sink. I'm going to show you something that I think is really, really, really cool. Hello? Yeah, it works. Great. Awesome. Let's make an interactive list together, OK? I, I, believe me, I'm, I don't have this bad posture. It's just I can't really reach the live diagramming part here, so I have to type. Uh, on the right side, we have a Visual uh, Studio Code extension that we've been developing at Stately. And it lets you embed the visual editor that we've been working on for the past year, which helps you diagram the logic and the behavior of basically any software you're modeling. It could be a component. I chose components today for the talk just because I wanted something to fit into half an hour. But honestly, these concepts all apply to any part of the stack. It could be your workflows, your CI, your server. It could be your application. It could be anything. But for the sake of simplicity in this talk, we're just going to model something very simple. OK, we want to have a list that has a bunch of user stories. We want a bunch of features. We want to build selection into a list of numbers, a stack of numbers from like 1 to 20 or whatever. And then we want to build selection. So when we click on one of the items in the list, we want it to be selected. And we want it to have a blue background. Let's do that using diagramming. We're not going to write a single line of code for the logic. We're just going to provide the implementations. OK, let's name our diagram interactive list. And so since we're dealing with a selection, every state machine starts from an initial state. You can't just you know, get into the state machine out of the blue. You have to start somewhere. So we're going to call that nothing selected. OK. What will happen if something is clicked? 
all right, we're going to transition to a state called, let's say, oh, okay, not that one. Okay, something selected. Let me just get rid of this one. Okay, and how do we get from nothing selected state to the something selected state? Of course, we're clicking on the item. But the more, like a better way to name that intention would be select single item. All right, that's great. And let's save this file, this magical file here. Okay, I'm importing the machine generated by the diagram that we just built here, which was this file, so that we can use that in our storybook instance here. And we see the list here. There's nothing happening when I click on the items, and we're gonna build that together now. Okay, so we have an interactive list component, a React component that gets a list of numbers as the prop, and we're trying to map over that, render them in an LI and button, and then on click of the button, actually select the elements. So, to be able to glue the state machine generated from the diagram that we just built into the React component, we're going to use a hook called use machine. And it's not anything magical, really. It's a hook that you can pass to your state machines, but basically it works like use reducer. And the hook will give us the way to read the current state of the state machine and a way to send an event to it, which is basically dispatch. Okay, let's see, there's a machine here, which is great. And we want this to be listed machine, which is awesome. All right. Um, there's a bit of hiccup. I'm sorry. Let's see. Okay, it works. I'm not exporting it, of course. This is where you get prepared for the talk. All right, yeah. So we have the state and the send here. Okay, so let's uncomment this. And all right, things have started to not work. All right, let's do this. I'm going to comment this part. There's a paragraph here that's going to tell me uh, the current state of the, um, the, the uh, state machine. So we're going to see what we're building together. Um, awesome. All right. Use machine, machine, and mm, children prop. You can. Oh, all right. I didn't. Thank you, though. All right. Never mind. Let's just get past this for now. All right, let's do something. Let's say that whenever, whenever I click on the uh, whenever I click on the um, on the list element here on the button, I want the element to be selected. For doing that, I'm going to have to send an intentional, like an explicit event to the state machine because in the state machine everything is either a state or an event, and nothing changes or happens unless there is a trace of events for it. So we're going to send select single item because that was the name of the event that we have on the right, uh, diagram on the right side. So the other thing that we should do here is that we need to add a data attribute because I have that um, in my um, in my uh, CSS. I'm telling it that if the element is selected, it should have a data that is selected HTML attribute. So in the state machine, not everything can be modeled as a uh, finite state. Some stuff should be just data, and we call that context or the notion of extended state because then the list of numbers, for example, or the list of selected IDs just can't be modeled using a quantitative measure, which is going to be like the finite state. So we're going to keep that in the uh, context of the machine. We're going to call that state.context, and if that includes the ID or the value of the element, we're going to you know, make this true so that data that's selected is, has a true value, and then it will have like a, um, it will have a uh, true value so it gets blue. Uh, state the context. This is really, really weird, though. Where is use machine coming from? This is correct. All right. Um, let's see. Um, pop, pop. If anybody can tell me what's wrong, I would appreciate that too. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, so we have a state that context or a state. Oh, it's because we don't have a context in our machine. I'm sorry about that. That should have been generated. It's a bug, but it's fine. All right. Let's. Hmm. All right, it's because our state is, yeah. Okay, so we have selection which should be empty. Okay, let's get past this. Come on. Um, bu -bu -bu state the context of selection that includes. Hmm, that's nice. I promise you I practiced. All right, it's working. All right, now when I click on this, it's not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, 
so it should include that, uh, and in our CSS, I'm telling it that if it has data selected true, it should have a background, but I'm not sure why it's not getting back. Maybe it's a cache. Sometimes it just caches a storybook. All right, let's see. Bear with me. I promise you, there's like some exciting stuff ahead of us. Um, all right, it's not working. Okay, let's just add a class name maybe. Mm. Let's see. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's do a console log and debug this together. This is fun. I'm going to show you how easy it is to debug things with state machines, or maybe convince you otherwise. All right, let's see. Yeah, something is selected. So we have, you know, we start from the nothing selected state, and actually clicking on an item will take us to the something is selected. You can see the console log on the right side. So the transition is happening. So let's see what we have in the... Oh, yeah, actually, I haven't provided the action. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, you see how we can, you know, probably she didn't know much about the state machines, right, Sarah? Okay, great. So we're debugging this together, and she understood my intention of the logic, and she's helping me debug this. This is nice. So one thing you can do is that to tell the state machine on receiving an event, run something like, uh, like execute this action for me, select item. And the state machine would say, okay, this is just a string to me. I'm gonna know that this is a serialized action. This is a name for an action. I don't know how to execute that. That's where you provide the implementation. To do that, the second parameter of the use machine is just the uh, object of the option, so you can provide action suite, and then you're gonna have to you know, pass an implementation to the same name that you have the actions in the diagram. So select item is gonna be something that we're gonna assign a value to the context. Assign is a special built-in type, which means, hey, I want to update the context of the machine. So it's like updating an object or something. So we're gonna say selection, all right, great. And it can receive a function that has access to the current context of the machine and the incoming event. Because remember, we're sending event to the machine to make changes. So I can tell it, hey, I want it to be an array with just the ID of the machine, uh, with just the ID of the list item. Okay, and I have to send the ID here. So I would say that it's a V value from the list that I'm iterating on. All right, let's just refresh to make sure. Um, You're talking here? Like ID is equal to V, that's what you're trying to find. You're not finding anything. No, 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 no. We're passing the ID here, and if it includes... It includes... Is this a block program? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come up here. It's fine. Okay, we're going to do a duo. Okay. Then here, get, Give it up. Get, get your hand Give up. Give it up, clap for it. How do you do an equals here? Okay. No, 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 equals. No, 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 no. it's just going to be this. Includes just a V because the V is here, so it's just going to be a bunch of integers. Does You're it... loving this, right? Mm -hmm. You're loving this? this no. Session? No? No. Okay. I'm sorry this is happening. It's fine. Oh, sorry, I thought you were using find. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm gonna get okay, it. so we're not updating it. Okay, uh, it's because... I am not returning anything here, am I? Selection is here, the select item is here. Let's check for the typo. Select item, this is great. Ah, oh, I didn't save my machine. Nice, okay. I need to save my machine to reflect the changes. And it's working, awesome, all right. So, quick recap, quick recap, we're wasting the time. Okay, so what happened here is that we, we, um, we had a list and we were transitioning from nothing selected to something selected, and we're sending an event, and we're running an action in React to that event. And the only thing that we need to provide here is the implementation for that action. Okay, let's build something else together. Again, another thing. All right, let's, on press of escape, let's attach a, a document, like an event handler to the document, say, if I'm pressing escape, I wanna clear the selection. To model that here is that, we're gonna say that, hey, if something is selected, and now you want this to be deselected, we're gonna add like a, oh, come on, it's not the time to, to crash on me. All right, let's do this. Okay, so when something is selected, we're gonna go to nothing is selected, we're on, on, in react to the event deselect all, and when deselect is happening, we're gonna run an action that clears the selection. Okay, now what happens here is that, let's save this for, uh, you know, to make sure. And okay, so we're, we have to send a, um, you have to have a use effect to send that event that we're expanding in our uh, state machine. Uh, document that event handler uh, key down, and then we want an e, and e, if e dot uh, key, um, it 
Uh, okay. If it's escape, then even on prevent default is because nobody wants to you know, do the default thing on escape. And then we're going to have to send an event. And this should be the same name here. So this is going to be select all. And what happens when we run the action select all? Well, we want this to be, what was that? Uh, clear selection. So what clear selection does is, again, tries to you know, assign something to the selection value in the context. And we want that to be just an empty array. OK, makes sense? Let's try this out. It works. OK, this is not working. Uh, what's that? There you go. Thank you very much. This is more programming, by the way. Yes. Ah, it should be. Yeah, it, it is in the actions. Come on. Thank you. All right. <laughs> you see, I'm selling the idea of a state machines to you, or maybe otherwise. <laughs> All right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it might be this one. Okay, so let's see. And maybe it's a, it's a key. All right, so let's press escape here. It's working, so escape is here, and then once uh, deselect all, let's make sure that this is the same name on the event. These. Thank you. All of this is planned. It's part of the big plan. <laughs> OK, it's working. Nice. Amazing. Hey, thank you. All right, let's do something else. OK, one other feature. All right. We want to add to the selection when I press the command on Mac OS or control on other devices. OK, so that means that it's exactly like the file system in your operating system. It's like you want to select multiple elements in the list. All right. To do that, we're going to back to our um, onclick here. And we want to say if the e dot meta key which means like I'm pressing the command or the control key, then I'm going to send an event call add to selection. And what am I going to add to the selection? Again, the ID of this item. And let's put this in an else because we don't want to accidentally send double events to our machine. And let's go back to modeling here because we don't have that in our, uh, in our state machine. And the state machine will simply ignore something that doesn't live in its definition. Okay. So if you want to add something, it doesn't make sense to add it to nothing is selected because add means we're appending and something else should have been selected previously. So we're going to add it here. This is called a self, uh, a, a, like a self event. It's like an event that you stay. You don't transition away from a state, but you actually just run an action on it. So let's call this add to selection because we still want to stay on the something selected state if we're adding to the selection. And we need to you know, run an action again. All right, let's save our machine again. All right, great, all good. Let's provide the implementations here. We want our, so we, we have the UI part, we're sending that event, but we just need the action. Add to selection would be another assign, surprise. And this again would be selection. And again, we want a concat here. We're not going to reset or, or, or just you know, hard code the value here. So we're going to say ctx.selection.concat.e.id. So check. I think everything should work. Let's check it again. So escape works. And let's press this one. All right, it's working too. Awesome. Thank you. Now, let's do one other thing because we still have time. Let's, OK, when we, when we press Command A, as users, we are, you know, we're used to seeing everything selected in the list, right? That just happens everywhere. So let's do that here. If I press Command and A anywhere near the list, I want all of the items to be selected. That should be a global event handler and document. Maybe it's not great for accessibility, but okay, let's just move past it now. It's fine. We're attached, we attach it to the document, and please clean up your effects. It's not like I'm not cleaning my event listener here. You just have to do that as a best practice. Let's do that here. Okay, so we're going to say another thing here, else if e.key equals a and e.metakey um, again, because we want command a. We have to, again, e.prevent default, otherwise it just selects all the text. It's just gross. Selects all the text on the, um, in the, um, on the page, and it's just the last thing I would want. All right, 
So let's do this and another event here, uh, select all. This should work. We again need to add it to the model because the diagram doesn't have that yet. Selecting all should happen in both of the states. If I haven't had anything selected in the, in, the, in the list, I still should be able to select all everything. If I had something previously, regardless of being multi-selected or single-selected, I still should be able to press Command and A and select everything. Therefore, this should be global. This should be hoisted on the parent, and in this case, the parent is just a machine itself. So we create an event on the parent so wherever we are in the child state inside the machine on press of, on, on receiving of the event, okay, let's get that here, select all, we go to something is selected, and again, we need to add an action here, and that's called select all. Okay, let's save this, and select all, which is working. So we need a, a missing action, select all. And what we need to do is to just assign everything to selection. It's just basically items, right? The prop. Let's just refresh a few times because it caches sometimes. Um, normal clicking works, escape, okay? Normal clicking, command, still everything works, no regression. Let's do command A, everything is selected. <laughs> Again, we're just sending events. You see, we're not providing anything in terms of logic, anything is specific. We're not even dealing with appending or list management. We're just sending events, and everything kind of feels like atomic updates. Okay, let's try another integration. What if I have normal selection, then multi-selection, and then command and A? Okay, it works. Okay, so everything good. Awesome, we don't have regression. All right, let's not cover the last one because I don't want to run out of time. What happened here is that instead of coding, we just live diagram and everything was generated for us. But it's not like traditional code gen that you can't trust whatever the compiler or the code gen tool is generating. It's like you're diagramming a model of a behavior and logic, and we're just representing the code version of it so that you can execute the model inside a React component. It's not like we're magically generating everything. We do, but, <laughs> but we're generating something that you created. Okay, so we're not being smart about it. We're just trying to represent your logic in the text version, which, is ha which just happens to be the code. You provided the diagram to us, which is great, right? Okay, so let's do one other thing. What if we wanted to test something that is modeled using a state machine? Okay, a state machine is great. Everything is predictable, deterministic, awesome. What if I want to test it? In fact, XSH ships with one of the packages called XSH React, which, is, uh, which carries the concepts of model-based testing. And how that helps, it lets you create a test model out of a runtime model that you had for the logic of your component. So you don't have to really re recreate a logic just for the test or mock most of the time anything. You're just reusing the same machine. Let's see what happens here. Okay, let's do console log. Let's create a test model using the same, very same machine that we imported and had in the use machine in the React component, and call get simple path. What happens here is that a state machine is just a computing unit that lets you diagram stuff, connect a bunch of boxes and arrows, and in an underlying implementation, generate a graph of all the possibilities. It's like your favorite module bundler or your compiler that knows the graph of dependencies between your modules and how things are connected to each other. It's that for the logic. We know how to go from state A to state B. In an application level logic, we could tell you if you have everything modeled using a state machine or the critical parts, how many possible paths are there for getting from the beginning of the homepage of an e-commerce app to the shopping cart. You usually don't know that. You usually just rely on manual QA or, or testing generated by the QA, and they have to come up with the scenarios and discover that. But with a state machine, you have all of that at your disposal because you modeled it once, and the graph is right there. And because of the same graph algorithms and traversals, we know that if you create a test model, which will generate a graph that XSA test understands, we can get the, all the simple paths for it. Let's just console like that. All right, so the, statement, the, the, the test model is telling me that there are seven different paths that are possible right now in the model of your uh, state machine. And I'm not gonna you know, add dragging and stuff, but just imagine that you could drag something like a selection box and whatever that fit into that selection, we would select it as well. It's just a normal other feature. Um, if we added that, I just went ahead, took the liberty and added that here. 
so that I could tell you if you added that, it would be just a very slightly simple change. It would be a slightly scaled version of your current state machine, but the test model would have told you out of seven or 34, like that's 34 is the generated path for something that had all the features that I wanted to implement, but since we're running out of time, we're just getting the seven generated ones. But imagine that you had a machine that wasn't the scale, that had just a bare bone MVP features, and you could generate like 34 paths out of it. I went ahead and add just a selection dragging model to it. It's almost the same. You can see that these parts are basically the same thing, just a little guards and conditions here and there, but nothing serious, really. And I just, you know, put everything under a not dragging state and separated that from the dragging state because when you're, you know, just, just dragging a selection box over the list of items, you could be in a dragging state and we don't want to allow any other manual selection to happen in that state, just something that the machine can do automatically using internal events. And everything that we just modeled together and live diagram will go under a not dragging state. So we would introduce a hierarchy. With that, the test model would have told you, you now magically have 240 different paths that are possible in your simple component that need to be tested. So imagine you're developing a component library, you model things using state machines, you, you haven't modeled things in state machines, and somebody opens a bug request and tells you, hey, here is like the way I can I don't know how to reproduce it. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe you have to have the right uh, you know, sequence of events to generate it. And, uh, but this bug exists in your code. Out of 240 generated paths, if you didn't know that manually, good luck finding that, really. It could lie in any of those paths. And rest in peace QA if they want to reproduce that. It's just impossible. And you would be surprised how many possible paths there are in a large scale React application, anything that you day-to-day -day work on, it's, it could be an order of millions, really. Depending on what you're trying to do, you might see, you might want to get like, you know, simple paths or plans. It's like, a, it's like a map of cities, if you think about it. It's like the states of your application are the cities on a Google map, and the events that you're sending are kind of like taking a you know, ride and going from one city to another. It's just easier if you see the map. Otherwise, if you blindly take on a road trip, good luck, right? Diagramming is great, guys. Really, really great. Um, I think diagramming is one of the possible futures for the web development. And that is something we're working on in Stately. We're betting on diagramming. Because when you diagram your problems, you know, again, regardless if it's a component library or application or anything, if you're diagramming, if you're drawing things, you're thinking about things up front without trying to solve that. Because usually if you rush into solving a problem, you try to come up with a, with a feature or, or like come up with a solution that might not extend well or be too limited for possible reasonable next steps of the feature. But when you diagram, you kind of are forced to see the boundaries of your problem, to learn the constraints of the problem you're solving, and then say, oh, okay, this is the whole picture. This is nice, so I, can, I know what I'm trying to do, and this is one of the limitations. Wow, it's nice that we caught it right now. You see the edge cases, and another thing great about diagramming is that you can always zoom in into a particular place in the diagram, focus on that, fix that, zoom out, move to another place, and try to solve other part of the problem. It's like you see all the things and the whole visualization is in front of you, so you choose at what particular place of the problem you're trying to approach right now, and then you know, move on until you, you figure out all the parts. Then, of course, reasonably, you can come up with better plans and estimates because we are all bad at estimates. And you would see different integrations because when you're working on a single component, teeny tiny component in a React application, things might not get out of hand. But when you start integrating different stateful parts and they try to talk to each other and plug them onto one single entity, that's where the integrations get nasty and you're missing out on things. That's why we have integration testing to make sure integrations work. That's how nasty they are. But with diagramming, we can see them because they're just another event in the state machine or the entire system. And again, you can see the layers of your problem because problems are layered and when you diagram them, you see all of the layers at once. Sometimes the, the layer is just the accessibility layer. Sometimes it's just the client side in general. Sometimes it's the back end, anything. This is what we're doing at Stately AI. I was thinking to myself, building this talk, hey, if diagrams are so good, why, does, why just not everybody does the diagramming instead of programming thing? Why do we tackle stuff like the traditional way we do? Well, I don't know, why you? Why do we do that? <laughs> 
But uh, honestly speaking, uh, we think at the stately that diagramming is the is a great way for a future for, for development or programming in general. And we think that traditional diagramming wouldn't scale to real world problems just because everything would make sense on pen and paper, but you can't really take that to practice. You can't execute that. That's why we're betting on executable diagrams. The diagrams in the stately that we're trying to build using the visual editor are the single source of truth. Because if things make sense in the diagram level, you should be able to just copy and paste it, port it somewhere else, and just execute that. Why not? Why do we have to, you know, remodel something in a certain stack and language to just satisfy the model that you had on pen and paper? And what we do is that you, 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 like with the visual editor at the Stately, I'm not selling the product to you, by the way. I'm just selling the idea of diagramming to you. Please, just, just, I want you to understand that. I want that to be clear. You have to just diagram. Just draw stuff. I don't even care if you use the state machines. Just diagram. Diagram and then get a model, like a runtime model out of that, and then execute that. Uh, because diagrams are great, they can also export to many things. You, you know, diagram is the logic, so it, makes on, it only makes sense to export it to a PNG to be able to share it in the documentation. It only makes sense to export it to a test model to test it. It makes sense to export it to a runtime model, to JavaScript, to TypeScript, and to execute it. You can see diagram is kind of like the abstract logic you're trying to build, and everything is kind of like a side effect and afterthought you can get out of it somehow. Um, and diagrams are really multi-purpose, and go, they, they go ex across the stack because anything can be you know, solved using diagramming. You can just see the boundaries of every problem. The problem doesn't care if it's in JavaScript or on the client side or the backend. Sometimes problems are the same, and you know, if you think using diagrams, you might actually be able to figure it out a lot faster. And another thing great about diagrams is that sometimes you can generate it too. You don't have to generally just draw boxes and arrows to get a diagram. We should be able to provide user stories to generate a diagram out of that. I want plain English. To, I, want, I want to be able to, to you know, explain the features out of a software that I want in plain English, and you be smart enough, the tooling be smart enough to generate the diagram out of it and then execute it and make me a software. I want that magic for the future of development. And sometimes we code to get a diagram. That's how traditional state management was working with the state machines. Sometimes I want markdown, sometimes I want plain text, some, sometimes I just want voice. I want it to be accessible. I want, I want to tell you what I want, and I want the diagram to generate. And we want to, the diagrams to go to the next level. We want to generate live event sequences from what the application is doing right now. I want to be able to plug diagrams into my live application so that I know when the user is clicking on this button, I see that, hey, it's actually this particular user of this ID is taking this path in my model. So it would be really nice. I want it to be collaborative because we don't work alone. We work in teams. And I want it to be adapt adaptive. What does that mean? Okay, if there are 240 ways to get from initial state of my application to the payment successful uh, state of my applications, I want to be able to optimize that. I want analytics to tell me what paths the users are taking so that I have a good way to focus on that and make them better. I don't want all the 240 paths to be optimized. And actually, this is one of the things that are in the plan, so we might be able to do that. Again, diagrams are just the gist of the logic of the software. And the runtime and the test and the documentation are just different representations of the same thing. We don't have to cater and babysit for all of them because they all kind of update and validate each other. We're maintaining tests, we're maintaining documentations, and they go stale all the time. We just have to just maintain a diagram. Thank you very much. <laughs>